Una de las ponencias que generó más interés en este foro científico fue la que presentó el doctor Anthony Clayton, economista jamaiquino, experto en temas de comercio marítimo internacional y desarrollo sostenible, profesor en las universidades de West Indies en Jamaica y Edinburgh en Gran Bretaña, es además profesor de la Escuela de Negocios de la Universidad Tecnológica de Jamaica. El doctor Clayton analizó la viabilidad económica y comercial del proyecto El Gran Canal en Nicaragua y además sus implicaciones sociales y de seguridad nacional, planteando viejas y nuevas preguntas que merecen ser debatidas por el público nicaragüense. Buenas noches, doctor Clayton. Gracias por acompañarnos. Buenas noches, Carlos. Los promotores del canal por Nicaragua argumentan que su viabilidad económica se basa en la existencia de una demanda de los barcos post-Panamax que no pueden transitar el canal de Panamá. ¿Qué tan grande es esa demanda? It's going to be very small because Panama at the moment is spending uh, five and a quarter billion dollars in expanding their canal. When they have finished this expansion, which will be next year, they will be able to take ships up to the largest commercial size, 18,000 TEU. Now, it is true that we are seeing the development of a new generation of ships, which will be even larger, up to 24,000 TEU. And they will not be able to go through the expanded Panama Canal, but at the moment, there are only a tiny handful of ships of that size. In a few years, there may be 10 or 12 ships of that size. But if that turns into a major segment of the market, it would actually be possible for Panama to dig another canal or to expand the existing canal to take ships of the larger size. In which case, the business case for constructing a longer canal system through Nicaragua would not exist. Si la ampliación del canal de Panamá representa un desafío para la competitividad de un futuro canal por Nicaragua, ¿pueden ser rentables económicamente dos canales? The consensus in the field at the moment is that it is not going to be possible for both canals to be profitable. At the moment, only something like 5% of shipping movements are through the Panama Canal, so you would end up competing for a small percentage of 5% of total shipping volumes. Nobody, uh, none of the independent analysts think that it would be possible for both canals to make a profit. En su ponencia, usted mencionó que existe otra ruta marítima entre ambos océanos al norte de Canadá. ¿Representa este pasaje por Canadá una alternativa al futuro canal por Nicaragua? Uh, yes, it looks like it's going to be. Uh, in 2007, for the first time, the Northwest Passage, north of Canada, was sufficiently free of ice for a ship, a commercial ship, to go through. And if the current projections are correct, in maybe five or six years from now, it will be ice-free for enough of the year to make it a viable shipping channel. If you send freight through the Northwest Passage, the journey is about 1,000 nautical, it's a, can sig significantly shorter between Europe and Asia than going through Central America. It would actually cut about 25% of the cost of shipping, which means that this will, it looks like it will emerge as a significant uh, challenge to the economic case for digging a canal. El gobierno de Nicaragua y la empresa china HKND primero dijeron que el canal costaría 40 mil millones de dólares. Después dijeron 50 mil millones. En su ponencia, usted dijo que el costo podría ser mayor. ¿Cuánto más? We don't know exactly, but if you benchmark the projection, projected cost for engineering this canal against comparable projects elsewhere, it looks as if their estimates of 50 billion dollars could be very Uh, could be on the low side. It could actually be a significant underestimate. This is going to be a very challenging project in engineering terms. They have to dig a shipping canal through an existing lake. And the canal has to be almost three times deeper or four times deeper than the bed of the lake. This means that they have to stable, stabilize the sides or else they have to be constantly dredging the shipping canal. This is going to be very challenging in engineering terms. So some people believe that the cost could be double 
or even triple the current estimates. Quiere decir que puede ser más de 100 mil millones de dólares. It's possible for a project of this scale? Yes, it is actually possible. So, <coughs> although we don't know, we don't have the, enough of the engineering data yet, but um, it does look to most independent people that the estimated engineering costs are probably a little on the low side. A pesar del secretismo con que se maneja este proyecto, ya conocemos algunos hallazgos por las investigaciones periodísticas que se están realizando. Pero ¿qué dicen los expertos? La literatura especializada. ¿Hay algún consenso? Yeah, if you if you look at the specialist literature in shipping and logistics, um, about 80% of the um, opinion at the moment is that this canal is probably um, there is not a strong business case. Most people um, find that the current projections are too optimistic, and most people, in fact, do not believe that this canal uh, will be dug because it's very hard to see the, the economic case. ¿Y esa es una investigación que usted realizó? It's some research I did myself, but, <coughs> but in fact, if you, if you simply go online and uh, you Google the economics of the canal, you will find qu quite a lot of uh, references in the, in the if, you, if you look especially at the specialist literature, if you look for logistics and supply chain journals and shipping journals, you will find quite a lot of discussion of the canal and you will also see that by and large the, um, the, the assessments are, are negative. Podría ser entonces un proyecto basado en consideraciones geopolíticas de la República Popular China? I think that is um, possible <coughs> because the, the business case uh, is, is not strong. Uh, China, one of the main drivers in China's foreign policy is that they're very concerned about securing their supply lines and access to markets. And China is very concerned about securing access to the <coughs> um, iron ore and soy and grains coming out of South America. So in, the, in terms of their, their long-term security, they would see this as a worthwhile investment. In which case, the argument for the canal is not strictly a business argument. This, they would see this as a strategic investment, not, uh, not as a business investment. ¿Cuáles son las preguntas que debería hacer el gobierno a la empresa china HKND para demostrar de manera realista si es viable económicamente el canal? If, if you look at any ma uh, com comparable major civil engineering project in another country, you will see that uh, the, the information is made publicly available, that there's a lot of um, independent assessment of the available data. So if I were the government of Nicaragua, I would ask the developers to make their business case and the economic analysis publicly available so that it then becomes possible for independents to scrutinize the economic data, look at their projections, and give the government other views as to whether or not this really is viable. ¿Usted ha hecho algún cálculo de las proyecciones de ingresos que se requerirían para que el canal fuera económicamente rentable? I've run various projections and it is extremely hard to see how this could repay the interest on the capital invested. If you take the most uh, optimistic projections, if you s assume that this would, uh, could be built for 40 or 50 billion dollars, and if you look at the number of ship movements through and think how much you would have to charge, it's very hard to see how you could afford to repay the, the interest on capital investment of 40 or 50 billion dollars, especially as you have the Panama Canal, which you have to compete with. And Panama has the advantage of already having the infrastructure in place. It's, uh, you would only be able to compete if you can take the top end of the market, if the new next generation of uh, post Panamax ships, the 24,000 TEU ships, and you have to, but then you have to assume that Panama will not also see this commercial potential. And the thing about the competitive environment is it changes all the time. If you see an opportunity, other people can also see the opportunity and will make commensurate investments, at which point you find that your market opportunity is being competed away. If you are then the one that has to repay the interest on a 40 or 50 billion dollar debt, it becomes impossible for you to service that debt. And that's why it is so hard 
to see the business case for, for digging this canal. Se ha hablado bastante ya de los eventuales impactos ambientales y sociales de este proyecto, pero en su ponencia usted habló de riesgos para la seguridad nacional de Nicaragua, un tema que hasta ahora, al menos en nuestro país, nadie ha abordado. ¿Cuáles son esos riesgos? There are really two separate risks. <coughs> One is that um, we already have transnational organized crime utilizing major transshipment hubs. And we have uh, a lot of the <coughs> transfers of illegal weapons, narcotics, and counterfeit goods coming through the world's major shipping hubs. Because unfortunately, criminal organizations see the same business opportunities that legitimate business organizations do. And they see the opportunity to move illicit goods through the same shipping terminals. And so, for example, <coughs> in the Sinaloa cartel, has been importing precursor chemicals from manufacture into synthetic narcotics through existing transshipment hubs. It is therefore extremely important that if Nicaragua is going to go ahead with this project, that security considerations are built in to the design of the facilities from the outset to ensure that you have secure areas, that personnel are screened <coughs> and that you have scanner technology to be able to scan all of the containers coming through. This does not necessarily add very much to the expense, but you have to address these issues in the design stage. Otherwise, as we have found to our cost in the Caribbean, it's much more expensive to retrofit security technology once you have the problem. The other issue is terrorism. Now, unfortunately, this too is inescapable. Once you become part of the critical supply chain for other countries, you also become a tempting target for terrorists who may have no argument with you, but this is you give them a way to strike at the economic interests of another country. You may represent the most accessible point in a supply chain. So it's, again, it's very important to think about these issues during the design stage <coughs> this means in practice that you have to uh, put in place protocols for intelligence sharing with other countries so that you get advanced information on any potential threat. And you have to develop the capability to respond to this, which means that you have to look at the uh, capability of, uh, of the police and the military to respond preemptively to any potential threat to installations on your soil. Pero ¿cómo se pueden abordar estos temas de seguridad desde la perspectiva de soberanía si el gobierno prácticamente le ha cedido la soberanía al enclave de una empresa china? ¿Habría alguna diferencia si este fuera un proyecto internacional o si es administrado exclusivamente por la República Popular China? Well, this actually raises several key concerns. The first is that if you form part of the import market, if, if the uh, goods coming through are destined for the U.S. market, you will in fact find that those goods will be blocked if you cannot provide guarantees of the security of the transshipment operation. Now, if in fact the contract for the Chinese company gives them control over security, then Nicaragua would find itself potentially liable for security issues over which in fact it then had no control. So it would be very important to look very carefully at the contractual arrangements to make it possible for the government of Nicaragua to deal with any security threat which might arise as a result of this operation. Because it is, of course, uh, Nicaraguan police who would have jurisdiction. And if, the, if you have a port operating as an enclave, it's then extremely important to establish uh, who has jurisdiction and whose laws apply. You don't want to wait until you actually have a major incident to um, have to discover who has jurisdiction. In Nicaragua, the government alleges that this canal will generate millions of employees and that this is our only way to win poverty. How can you evaluate this project from the sustainable perspective? The project has potential. Um, there are potential, but it is also a high risk. This is a gamble. 
which Nicaragua would make. And fundamentally, it depends on the business case. Is there a real business case for digging this canal? If there is a really strong economic case for building this canal, then of course it is possible for the people to say, well, <coughs> there will be some environmental cost, but we're willing to accept this in, in exchange for the economic benefits. But if the economic benefits are not there, then it's the people of Nicaragua would mainly have the risk associated with the project and may not see the benefits. So it is extremely important for the government to make this information public and to encourage the developer to make this information public so that it can be subjected to proper international independent evaluation. They, if the developers are, are confident that there is a good business case, then of course they will not object to making this information available. At this moment, we don't know the economic studies or the impact ambiental that have been contracted por la empresa china, pero de acuerdo a su experiencia internacional, ¿estos estudios le darán a Nicaragua alguna garantía o estas empresas consultoras le dirán a HKND lo que quiere oír porque la empresa china es la que les está pagando? Ultimately, this is actually something for the government of Nicaragua to decide because <coughs> it, if the government allows the contractor, the people putting forward the proposal, to decide who should do the evaluation. If the evaluation goes only to the company, if the company own the intellectual property rights for the evaluation and then can then decide if they wish to make that information publicly available, then of course there is a, a legitimate concern that any information which is not favorable to the project may not in fact be made publicly available. This project is far too important and if, there, if, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, then this country could be living with the consequences for many, many years. It is far too important to make this decision, a decision of this magnitude, without making sure that the evidence is good, that the science is as good as it possibly can be, that the economic projections are robust. If all of this is true, then fine, then the country should go ahead. But if this is based on a weak analysis, then the chances are that the project may fail and the consequences for this country could be very severe. So it is for the government to determine how much of this information should be available. Ultimately, even if the company wishes to withhold this information, the government can require that this information is made publicly available. And that would be in the best interests of the government and of the people. Because that way, and that is the only way to ensure that this decision is based on the facts and that the business plan has a good chance of working. Gracias, Dr. Clayton, por sus consideraciones esta noche. El gobierno ha dicho que en diciembre de este año presentarán los resultados del estudio de impacto ambiental, los resultados de los estudios económicos, lo que se concluye de este foro científico que se ha realizado esta semana en Managua es que estos estudios deberían ser sometidos al escrutinio de un comité independiente de expertos nacionales e internacionales y ojalá que este esfuerzo sea el inicio de un verdadero diálogo, debate nacional y que tenga continuidad en el monitoreo de este proyecto. Las conclusiones del taller de científicos internacionales estarán disponibles a partir de mañana en la página web de Confidencial y en la dirección www.confidencial.com.ni y en el sitio web de la Academia de Ciencias www.ciencasdenicaragua.org.